Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here because I want to run through the things that I've been reading lately, which honestly has not been that much. And then I also wanted to share the nine books that I am taking with me on a trip to North Carolina to my husband's family's farm. You know, you gotta have options when you travel. So I'm taking nine books, I think, with me. Um, and then we'll see what we end up reading and I'll tell you a little bit about them or why I want to read them. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to be putting on my makeup for work today because I have to go in like mm, like 20-ish minutes. So hopefully this won't take that long. So let's run through quickly the books that I've read since you last saw me. I really enjoyed Nubia Real One by L.L. McKinney. Um, that's a graphic novel, a young adult graphic novel, and it does have superhero elements in it. Um, then after that I've read Premeditated Myrtle um, by Elizabeth C. Boons. Oh, I just reorganized this whole area and I'm like reaching for stuff that's not there. So this is supposed, this is a middle grade mystery and I didn't really enjoy it. I thought that it was too slow. I couldn't really envision kids really delving into this unless they like really slow paced books. And I also knew who the killer was pretty much from the get-go. Um, I want to say like 30% of the way through, I, I had it on lock. There was a little twist at the end that kind of changed things up, but I just thought this was okay. I also read The Secret Lives of Church Ladies, which I loved, um, and I definitely recommend that one. I feel like everybody and their mother has read it. If you haven't, that's not the right brush. Yeah, that is the right brush. I washed my makeup brushes yesterday, you know, after you use them. They kind of start getting like full of gunk and full of product and therefore they don't feel fluffy and this one felt too fluffy it didn't feel right um but this is the right brush the secret lives of church ladies was just phenomenal i love pretty much every story in it i just loved the way that the characters were written because it made you want to learn more about them even after this tiny story um and i think that's the success of a short story if it makes you feel like you would love to read more about them that means that it gave you a really good glimpse into the character in just those amount of pages i think that's a successful short story collection anyway all the stories in there are amazing yeah i will continue recommending this book probably for the rest of the year one of my favorites that i've read so far this year i read leave the world behind by Rahman alam there were elements of it that i thought were really fascinating there's a lot of tension that i enjoyed but ultimately i didn't really love like the point. I didn't love the commentary that it was trying to reach for. I enjoyed Tangled Up in Blue. This is a book by Rosa Brooks that really got me out of a slump. I was not reading at all and I like zipped through this one. It's a really interesting memoir of a woman who um, joins the Metropolitan Police Academy in um, DC. It was really interesting to see kind of like her reasonings for getting into it so she's been raised really liberal by her mother her mother literally wrote nickel and dime and so she has like all of these predispositions about police officers and preconceived notions and it was fascinating to see her like go through this and then see the actual real lives of these police officers so um she trained to be a reserve officer so she's part she has to do a certain amount of hours per week or per month. She's like a lawyer, she's a professor, so she's very in tune and very intellectual and smart. I just like seeing her life as well and seeing her meet all of these types of police officers and to talk about what policing in America is like right now and the issues that it's having right now. After that I read Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully. I was not that impressed with this book. I know so many people have loved it um, and I think I ended up giving it three stars. I really loved the setup of it. I really enjoyed learning about um, native culture. It's Ojibwe and so that was really fascinating to kind of be taken along through all of this. I didn't understand why this book was set in the 2000s if I'm honest. I feel like maybe because then you wouldn't be able to like google things but it just felt weird i also didn't love the romance in this i thought there was a weird power dynamic in the romance and i didn't feel like the love interest shined either like i didn't understand why she was so into him and i think it took too long to get to the end i think this book is very bloated and i think it's a book that could be cut down significantly i also don't know what i'm gonna do with this hair i've been really not happy with my hair lately it is so big and so so hot all the time and i just want to chop it all off but i have to wait until my wedding because i don't want short hair particularly for my wedding but i would love the feeling of short hair right now this summer i missed fall and winter if i'm honest i feel like it's so much easier to dress for those seasons what color do i want to do today i don't even know 
intermission. The Elephant in the Room by Holly Goldberg Sloan was an anticipated middle grade read for me because I loved um, To Night Owl from Dogfish or To Dogfish? No, To Night Owl from Dogfish by Meg Wallitzer and Holly Goldberg Sloan. Um, I thought that book was so smart and lovely and I really enjoyed it. So that's why I, I was really looking forward to this one. Um, I thought that it was good. I think I ended up giving it three and a half stars. It um, has those sweet characters. It has those um, like grandpa kind of figure and child figure relationship and also like making a new friend of someone that's kind of an outcast in school which I enjoyed um, and it also had a lot to say about immigration which I thought was interesting and like missing her mom which is really sad and I thought it was well done but I didn't feel like I this got me truly in the feels. I don't know like sometimes when you read books like this they really touch you and this book I didn't feel like it touched me as much as I thought that I was going to or as much as um you know Tonight All from Dogfish did. So I think three and a half is fair for me for this book. Um, and I also thought maybe the elephant elements in this book I don't know I just thought that they were going to go differently than they did. Um, but yeah, a nice middle grade read if you're looking for something kind of uplifting and contemporary. Then I read The Guest List by Lucy Foley and I really enjoyed this one. I gave it four stars. I think the only real downsides to this book are the amount of like fat shaming and like fat comments that are made in it. They are really like kind of gross and felt really unnecessary honestly. Like there's enough going on um, that I, we didn't need that in my opinion. But yeah, that's pretty much the only downside to this. I thought that this book was a really fun mystery. The whole time I was like, oh, it's this person, oh, it's this person, and I really feel like the turns ended up being um, quite satisfying without being over the top. So I enjoyed that. That is kind of a lot of blush, but I'm, I'm kind of liking it. It's kind of hard to see on this mirror next to me over here. So hopefully this is going on okay, you know. The thing about that I've learned so far is like, I'm not that good at makeup. So <laughs> it's okay if I look like a clown some days because it's just me learning more. So the guest list, really fun and it's kind of a grittier and I like the locked house element of it, of them being stuck on this island and all of the wedding stuff I thought was also kind of fascinating and all of the problems that all of these people had even though on the surface they all look like they got along. And I listened to it on audiobook and it has multiple narrators which I also enjoyed. I also read Wink by Rob Harrell. This book is a middle grade book about um, a kid, and it's based off of the author's real life, a kid who um, ends up getting eye cancer and has to go through all of these procedures to um, make sure that he is going to survive it. And um, he loses sight in part of partially in his eye and it's him discovering new things like rock and roll and playing music, and making new friends as one of his friends is moving away. I really enjoyed um, the relationship between the dad and the stepmom in this book with the main character. And it also has like comic book elements in this which I think kids would really enjoy. I think I ended up settling on three and a half stars for that one. Yeah, pretty much all my middle grades are three and a half at the moment. Um, the Mysterious Disappearance of Aiden S by David Levithan. I gave three and a half stars. I thought that this was really muted and I thought um, maybe it'd be a little bit too fantastical for me and it wasn't and I was so happy about that. And I really liked uh, the brother elements in this. I thought that brothers were really well done in this book. Just the the ideas of it of like, will you would you believe something so impossible like this? This, even though you like really trust this person so I thought it was a good book especially for like older middle grade readers so I'd probably recommend it to like a 12 13 year old um yeah I, I enjoyed that one look how cute the sailor moon cover thing is and when you move it her mouth moves so the bottom three have been so cute and I also really like that one let's keep going I'm almost done actually I have three more American cult by Robin Chapman is a an anthology a non-fiction graphic novel anthology a graphic non-fiction anthology there you go about cults and every single uh story is by a different illustrator which I found really fascinating a concept that I have really um seen done very often and the topic of cults I think is fascinating. Um, I'll pretty much read anything about cults. It's just fascinating to see like how they start, how they function, like what's their downfall, why they don't, they don't work. Why do people like cults or why do people join cults? I find that fascinating to learn about. Ooh, look how, look how glittery that is. I like that. So I really enjoyed this. Definitely there are some illustrators that I didn't love. Some of them are, they like really pack in their illustrations and it's hard to read the text and to get a sense of what's going on. Do I want to do anything else? Hmm, this color here, diamond cut on the inner part of my eye. 
what time is it and then um i read fits and cleo by jonathan stutzman this is a good one for um beginning graphic novel readers it was really cute actually really funny way funnier than i anticipated i was pretty much cracking up whoa that really brightens up the eye i like that last but not least i read starfish by lisa phipps this book is a novel in verse about a uh it's for middle grade readers about a young girl who is overweight and her relationship to that and how her family sees her especially her mom pretty much bullies her and it's her um growing through all of this and seeing how other people don't judge her for that a good one for self-acceptance and it i really enjoyed the voice of the main character i thought that that was the best part about this book is how much I felt in tune with the main character Ellie and I think there are some really nice turns of phrases in here that I was just like oh that's really nicely put. I listened to it and I really enjoyed the audiobook too. I think I ended up settling on four stars for this one. Um, I quite enjoyed that one. Anyway so we're done with the books that I've read. Honestly not that many as you can see. Okay so let's talk about the books I'm taking with me. Let me do my eyeliner and then we'll be done. I thought that this was going to be more fun, but maybe it would have been better for me to just do this without any distractions and then filmed. <laughs> what can you do? Um, I messed up. Oh god. I think we're all settled. The only thing I don't know about is my hair. I'll figure that out in a second. So let's run through the books that I'm going to take with me. I picked nine. Three adult fiction books, three non-fiction books for adults, and then three graphic novels or graphic memoirs or non-fiction. So let's go first through the graphic novels, I think. So I have one representing each age range, which is nice. I have one for kids called Picasso. I read Remy Lai's previous book. Well, she's had, this is her third, I believe. And the first one I read for middle grade March, not this year, but the year before that. Um, and I really liked the artistic elements of that, of that fiction book. And then this is her first real totally graphic novel book. Um, I didn't quite love the writing as much in that book, so let's see what I think about the writing in this one. And then I also have volume 3 of Heartstopper, which finally came out over here in the US and I've been on hold waiting for it. I'm super excited. I don't know, in my head, I feel like I remember them being in color, but maybe that's something that I misremember. <laughs> but anyway, here that is. And then finally, Paying the Land by Joe Sacco. I have this book mostly because of um, a video that Remembered Reads did about Joe Sacco and his style of um, reportage, reporting on in graphic novel format. It looks at the Subarctic Canadian Northwest Territories um, and the resources, natural resources, and how it's changing because people want to mine that stuff. So we'll see what I end up thinking about this one. It's, it'll be my first one by Joe Sacco. I've never read anything by him. I think nonfiction next. So this book is the one that we're going to attempt to listen to on the road because we just watched the movie Nomadland um, with Francis Mc... Francis McDermott? We both watched a movie, my husband and I, so I think he is okay with listening to an audiobook on the road um, that he has some connection to. Then I have Plunder. This is an anticipated nonfiction read for me. It is Family Property and Na Nazi Treasure. So it says it's the author's story to reclaim his family's apartment building in Poland and of the astonishing entanglement with Nazi treasures hunters that follows. It's supposed to be a an immersive adventure story and a daring interrogation interrogation of inheritance. So I'm hoping that this one is good. Um, and it's a shorter nonfiction read, which is what I've been really focused on lately because I'm almost done. Hold on, I'll go grab it. Almost done with We Keep the Dead Close by Becky Hooper that I've literally been reading for like three weeks, four weeks at this point. It's so long, it's almost 500 pages, and I've been enjoying it, but I feel like there's a lot in this book that can be definitely cut, um, and that's why I'm like leaning towards shorter nonfiction books. I just don't have the attention span. I just don't have the attention span in the summertime, it feels like. And yeah, this has been a lot to get through. And I feel like it's wasted time that you could just be packing a more, you know, tight narrative too than just like going all over the place tangent wise. And then last but not least, and the last nonfiction book is Nickel and Dimes. Um, so like I said, I read Rosa Brooks' book and then her talking about her mother and like what this book meant to her mother's career and like how that impacted how Rosa Brooks grew up. Um, has made me want to pick this up. This is a classic of nonfiction that I've never read. Definitely really loved like Evicted, so I feel like this is a good transition to something like it. Um, and again, another shorter one that I'm looking forward to. I haven't been so much wanting to pull middle grade fiction because as you saw from my like little wrap up, I've read a lot in the last two months um, and I haven't really read that much adult fiction. So I have three here. I really want a gritty, like dark, short, impactful, 
devastating read so i have i'm thinking of ending things by ian reed i haven't read this book i've seen a lot of people talk about and review this book in years past it's like an older one so i have it checked out i also have fates and furies which i think is also going to be depressing can you tell like what kind of a mood i am in um and this is about a marriage and all of the intricacies of that i've always wanted to read lauren groff and it's again an older one um and i saw at the library and i just pulled because it's something that i do you think I want to read? So here it is. I know a lot of people have read it um, and I haven't. And then last but not least, I wanted to pick out a thriller. I've been so hot, like I mentioned at the beginning of my video, that I've been dreaming of cold temperature and cold weather. So I picked out One by One by Ruth Ware. I read another Ruth Ware this year that I really enjoyed. So that's why I'm excited to read another one by her. This is again supposed to be kind of like the guest list, a little bit of a closed room mystery which I think have become my favorite so far of like everybody's in the same room and you're trying to figure out who it is that did it there um so yeah excited to get to this one I don't know that much about it I just know that they're stuck at like a resort kind of a thing um in the French Alps that's it for me those are the books that I'm going to take with me on our trip to North Carolina yeah I don't think I'll read all of them wish me luck and thank you so much for watching I'll see you in my next video I hope you're having a great summer bye bye